justice is coming. For the first time, a broadcast network fully dedicated to crime and investigation programming, plus a groundbreaking commitment to support national and local law enforcement. Each hour, the Justice Network will ask for your help in finding dangerous criminals, locating missing children, and help you avoid becoming a victim. Join me, John Walsh, on the all-new Justice Network. We need help to find this missing child. Alexandria Lowitzer was 16 when she went missing. She was last seen in Spring, Texas in April of 2010. This is what we believe she looks like today at age 20. If you have any information, please call the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children at 1-800-THE-LOST. That's 1-800-843-5678. Please help bring Alexandria Lowitzer home. Hi, I'm John Malos. Welcome to this live edition of Connect With Me on the showroom floor at Ventura TV on this day. It's a Friday morning. We've got two guests in the house today. First of all, we're going to talk about shredding your documents. Second uh, half of the program, we're talking about college education and funding. Oh my goodness, it costs a lot of money to go to college. 436 Me TV Option 11. We're back, my friends, in just a moment. And welcome back to the program. It is Friday. Aren't you glad the weekend is upon us already, my friends? It's, where are these weeks going by? It seems like it was just Christmas, uh, New Year's, January, January, February, March, April. Where are these months going? My goodness gracious sakes alive. Anyway, uh, next week we will celebrate our fourth well, we're going into our fourth year here on Connect With Me on MeTV Fresno. And as a reminder, you can watch us live each and every Monday through Friday on Comcast Channel 187, 43.6 and 13.1. And then later on in the day, the replay comes at 2 o'clock in the afternoon at 13.6 and 8 o'clock at night on 4.6 Biz TV. And you can catch me on Twitter. I've got to update it. It's at John Mallows, Me TV. A lot to talk about today. We've got a couple of guests in the studio. And we got the Better Business Bureau, and later we'll talk uh, college education uh, for your kids. It costs a lot of money, but tomorrow is a big day for the Better Business Bureau because they're going to be here in the city of Fresno helping you, my friends, and your f neighbors and your relatives shred their precious documents. Let's roll the videotape, and I'll show you exactly what I am talking about. It all takes place at Bullard High School tomorrow, where members of the Bureau will have a mobile shredding truck on site to help do away with anything that needs to be destroyed. You can actually sit there and watch it all happen right in front of your own eyes. They'll have only one truck, but it'll be a big one. It'll hold five tons of documents. Five tons. The event starts uh, in the morning at 10, goes for three hours. All you have to do is drive up. The volunteers are actually... They'll unload the boxes for you. You don't even have to get out of your car if you don't want to. This is all in an effort to help you protect your identity because there are those who go and dumpster dive to try to retrieve your information, you know, like social security number, credit card, so on. And so live in our studio right now is Gabby Mendoza. She is from the Better Business Bureau. She has been here before. She is here to talk about identity theft and those people she doesn't know them personally, of course, but those people who go and dive into dumpsters trying to get your social security number. Uh, 436 Me TV Option 11, we're going to talk about all this. Gabby's been here before. And by the way, when you call in at 436 Me TV Option 11, tell Gabby congratulations. She's due next month. She's eight months pregnant, her second child. We're excited. Oh my gosh, I can't wait. 436 Me TV Option 11 back in a moment. <laughs>
Euro News, most watched news channel in Europe. Oh my goodness, we're here with Gabby Mendoza from the Better Business Bureau. So are you, uh, you're eight months pregnant. Congratulations, Thank by you. the way. I'm so excited for you. Second <laughs> child, you. right? Yes. And it is going to be a? A girl. All right. Yes, Yippee. yes, yes, yes. Are you craving chocolate right now? <laughs> no. I have some. <laughs> I'm okay. You want some? Are you sure? I'm I can give sure. you a little square of dark chocolate. No? <laughs> it's okay. All right. Maybe after the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. Anyway. So, so you've got some big events coming up, and um, uh, we're going to show those later on. But right now, you know, I want to roll some videotape and uh, the shredding bins. And so what's this event all about? The event is all about, it, we really try to pr uh, promote identity theft. So the purpose of the event is to promote identity theft awareness. So we invite the community to come out to our shred events so that they can protect themselves from being victim, uh, victims of identity theft. And one of the re ways to do that is to shred the documents. Um, a lot of people tend to... Just, you know, we get tons of mail every day, daily, and we get bombarded with it, so we just throw throw it away in the trash. I'm um, mm. not realizing or thinking that there's people out there at night uh, dumping into your <laughs> dumpster trash, and they're getting all your information, your name, your address, your phone number, um, just all your personal information, and they're selling it. Um, what we've heard is typically a regular grocery bag would be um can go for fifty dollars a bag yeah just with your personal information you mean if you're if you, you mean if i steal your identity and i have a bunch of documents in a bag i can sell that for for what 50 bucks a shot yes wow so if you want to steal my identity that one way to do that um is to go to people's homes or businesses and look into the dumpsters and see what information you can find yeah, I know, because when you put your garbage cans out at night, um, whatever day it is, you know, for them to pick it up, I guess part of the problem is if you put information in that can without shredding it, then you're, you're really leaving yourself wide open, aren't you? Because right. at 3 in the morning while you're sleeping, your cans are out front. Anybody can dive in there and get it. Oh, yes. So that's what you're trying to prevent. Exactly. And, um, yeah, so they're getting your name. They're getting, you know, whatever you're throwing in, their medical bills, uh, PG&E bills, all of that has your name, address, phone number, um, possibly account numbers, Social Security numbers that you may not see. And they're getting all that information, and they're selling it, and um, they're just creating profiles on you yeah with the information and that is exactly why we do these shred events um so people can be aware not to just throw their trash away save them wait for our events and come out and get them shredded yeah 436 me tv option 11 is the telephone number if you want to call in and ask gabby a question she works uh closely uh with blair looney over there at the better business bureau here in the city of fresno now let's roll another piece of videotape, uh, sh the shredding process, the actual shredding process. You have a five-ton truck out there, or are going to have tomorrow at Bullard High, right? Um, yes, so we will be out at Bullard High School tomorrow. We have a Discount Shred. Um, that's the company who donates their time um, to come out and shred the documents on site. It's a, uh, it's a mobile shredding professional truck, mm -hmm. and they come out. We'll be at Bullard High School from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m., you can bring as many boxes as you want uh, with documents that you want to be shredded. The first two boxes are free. Anything yeah. after that, it's a $3 box donation for each yeah. box. Here, what, what video are we looking at here? Because I see lifestyle furniture in the background. So. Um, yes, we were at Lifestyle Furniture on March 21st. Mm -hmm. And um, the group working that event was a central SPCA. And as you're looking at right now, that bin is going up into the company's truck and it's getting dumped in there and hmm. it's going to be shredded right there and then can, and can you stand there and watch if you yes want? Oh. um the the event is a drive up drive off but you can you know um, pull over and get off and stand right by the driver and there's a screen there that you can see where all your papers go to yeah look at that mm -hmm. uh let's play this video out uh, till the bitter end so we can see what happens here um, this is a pretty long videotape, but there it is right now. Is it shredding right there? It's, it's shredding, right, shredding there right there and there. then. Yeah, it's pretty can this, cool. Can this thing shred like phone books and everything else? No, oh, no, okay. no. Just it documents. Can, documents, yes. Yeah, that's the actual shred. So if it were me, you know, I'd bring my documents. I, I would want to watch because I, w I would say, okay, 
Yeah, I guess I'm not that trusting. <laughs> I want to make sure you're going to shred my documents. Yeah. So if I'm going to hand them over, I want to make sure. Not that you won't, but there <laughs> it is. That's the actual shred. Yeah, Man, that's amazing. It shreds huh? it right there on site. Wow. Yeah, it's pretty cool. And there's a monitor on the side of the truck where you can see um, the inside of that. And that's what it looks like. That's and what it looks like. So you cannot, okay, out of that pile right there, is it possible to pick up a piece of paper that might still have a number on it, or is this no, it's cr it's is this like a crisscross yes. shredding yes. process? Yep. It is. Yes, it is. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, the event is tomorrow. Starts at what time? At 10 it starts at 10 a.m. Um, until 1 p.m. or until the truck is full. Um, there's been instances where the truck is full. We can no longer take more documents because it can only hold so much. So if you want to make sure your papers get uh, shredded tomorrow yeah. or any other events, make sure you, um, you get there right when it starts. Where, and where at Bullard High? It's going to be um, on the Browning. Uh, it's Palm oh. and Browning parking lot area. Yeah. And we'll have banners out there. We'll have um, the volunteers holding up signs, directing traffic, letting you know. And you'll see the truck yeah. parked in the parking lot. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So tomorrow, uh, ten o'clock. It's only three hours. Bullard High School over there at uh, on. It's you know it's on Palm. You know where Bullard High is. I, I'm assuming at this point, ten o'clock in the morning until one. Uh, that is the Better Business Bureau trying to save you from any kind of identity theft. They got a shredding uh, event tomorrow. Four three six Me TV Option Eleven. We're going to come back and talk more with Gabby Mendoza from the Better Business Bureau in just a moment. It's almost time. Now we'll find out once and for all about Clark Kent, Superman. Look up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's a TV show. Yes, but who is he? What's his name? He's Superman. Golly, Clark, won't that be wonderful seeing Superman? Fighting a never-ending battle for truth, justice, and television the Me TV way. No one can do the things that Superman does. The Adventures of Superman. Now on Me TV Fresno, Xfinity 187. And welcome back to the program, 436 Me TV Option 11. We're glad that you're here because Gabby Mendoza is here. Let's hope that, when's the baby due? May 4th. Okay, let's hope that uh, nothing happens during <laughs> this half hour. Anyway, 436 Me TV Option 11. And caller, are you there? Go ahead. Uh, yeah, direct to uh, Gabby Mendoza. Uh, uh, why don't, uh, I mean, I, this is the first time I've heard of, of the shredding uh, having shredding uh, in any community, why isn't it more announced uh, to the small communities? Because I know that a lot of the towns uh, have the alleyways, you know, where, uh, where they put garbage, uh, you know, uh, cans in the alleys, and, and the trucks go through there. Not, and those speak of the, the areas that they live, okay? And where I live, it's, it's, it's a better area, and then they have the cans in the front, and it's well lit, more of today. But in the older sections of the town, they have them in the, in the alley, and it's easy to go in there and, you know, go through the cans and get all the information they need. I, I think the communities have to get involved, number one, to make sure, like, what you're doing, and, and have them be aware about, about, you know, shredding all the information, because a lot of people... They, they, they just don't want to take the time, so they just throw it in the cans and that's it. But what you're doing is great for everyone, you know. Uh, my question is this. Why why isn't the, uh, well, in your case, what you're doing, shredding the bullard, it, it spread out to other communities, especially the small towns, you know, because that's where most of the people per, 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 would probably go and, and get a lot of information in, in, a, in a smaller rural town where they just don't want to, you know, take the time to trade it, so... Okay. That's my question. All and right. that, that's a great question. Um, and we've actually, we, we go to different communities. Um, so this Saturday we will be at Bullard, but we are going to go to Oakhurst. We, vi we visit Atwater, Madera. Um, we do several in Fresno, different areas. Um, last year we tried to, um, and we've done it in the past, tried to go to like the smaller communities um, like Kerman, uh, Mendota, little small towns. And for some reason, unfortunately, they've been... Um, not as successful 
Hmm. as um, like Bullard or all the other bigger high schools um, for when whatever you say reason. When not as successful, does that mean not as many people have showed attended, up? Attended, correct. Okay. And we've promoted it the same way, just so the way we've promoted all the other ones. And um, that's uh, that we're really trying to figure that out is uh, why people in those areas are not coming yeah as we would mm. love for them to come. Um, it's just, it, it really has to do with uh, my experience. The group that works the event and location matter a lot. Yeah. And um, that's why we select, you know, location uh, groups like Central SBCA high school groups. And we let, we let them know this event will be successful um, based on how much you promote it. We promote as much as we possibly can, but you know, their supporters are usually the ones that come out and support them because all proceeds made that day go to the group 100%. So it's kind of like a fundraiser for them. How do you promote? We put it on all the community calendars. We put it in the front lo local newspapers. Um, we have um, uh, different uh, companies that also we have discount shred we have golden one um, 47 on your side they actually promote the event for us um, right. so we try to uh, we contact our contacts all of our accredited businesses from the BBB um, we send it to the chambers and then we give um, the information to the group that's working the event so mm -hmm. that they can promote it to their contacts um, parents the schools and all of their supporters so that they can come out and support them yeah, it takes a lot to promote a, an, it a, an event, and it's costly, too. Just to mm -hmm. put an ad in the Fresno Bee, I'm sure it's not cheap, right? Right. Um, so we, we just blast it as much as, you know, we put it on social media. Right. And, you know, based on who sees it and who supports the group, I'm assuming that those are the people who attend. I do want to put up a full screen that shows the dates of all, and we're going to put this up more than once so we can we can kind of, you know, um, promote it as well ourselves. So tomorrow at Bullard High School, you see here and here are the other events on April the 18th, uh, Oakhurst. That's up the hill there a ways, what, about an hour, something like that? Mm -hmm. And then Sunnyside High School on May the 2nd and May the 16th, uh, you're going to be in Bakersfield because you serve the whole Central Valley, the Better Business Bureau. Yes, does, right? we cover 11 counties, so we um, we try to go to as many as we possibly can. But that's a great question. Um, just because some of them have not been successful does not mean we will not go back and, and yeah. you know, attempt again to go to the smaller communities that really, really need it. Hey, let's put those dates up one more time. And I want to ask you, do why do people, even if they hear about the event, why do they take it for granted and they just say, well, you know, I don't have the time, um, I'll shred the documents myself or I'll just put them in the can. Why don't more people go? Why don't more people take this uh, identity theft uh, issue more seriously? Maybe because it, nothing has happened to them, you know. We get. A, I talk to so many people that come up, and they've had, they've experienced identity theft themselves or a family or relative, and that's why they get more into saving their documents and um, waiting for one of these events so that they can get them shredded. You know, even a, even a, like a receipt from a doctor's office, oftentimes, you know, the way they're printed out in there, they're printed out on these full sheets. Yeah. It has a lot of your information on there, your uh, home address. Oftentimes, your social, your phone number, your cell number, um, you know, any kind of other numbers on there that they can use. Um, and, and I guess many people just look at that and they say, ah, it's just, just, it's only from the doctor's office. I'll just throw it in the can. Right. Without realizing it could be a potential danger there, right? Oh, yes. Even to the, um, the little pharmacy, your, your pill bottles. Um, the little labels, mm -hmm. those we don't recommend you just throwing them away because they also have personal information. And yeah. we don't take those at the shred events, but you can rip them off and, you know, yeah. you can shred those. Yeah, you can. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, got to take a break. We're going to come back here and you can call in. Feel free to call in. 436-ME-TV, uh, option 11. We're back in just a moment. Frigidaire. It means the first electric refrigerator. The first compact electric range. Now, there's the Frigidaire Gallery Range with Symmetry Double Ovens. It's designed to cook multiple dishes at multiple temperatures so you can prepare the entire meal at the same time. Frigidaire, over 90 years of legendary innovation. See the full line of Frigidaire appliances at Ventura TV Electronics and Appliances.
back here talking with Gabby Mendoza of the Better Business Bureau and talking about, about identity theft. The tomorrow's event um, is at Bullard High School. It starts at 10 o'clock. It's a three-hour event. Let's take uh, the full screens here and we'll talk about uh, those are the dates. Let's put the next one up and it'll, it'll talk about obviously what it's going to cost you. Uh, the first box is going to be free. Now, how big can this box be? The first two boxes are oh, free. Oh, first two boxes are yes. free. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the first two boxes are, how big can these boxes be? The, the boxes are typically your um, your re uh, Rima paper sizes. So when you go to Office Max or, you know, Office Depot, you yeah. get your paper. That's the size that we're talking about. Okay. But mm -hmm. then each box after that is $3 per box, right? Yes. And that size. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, and... If you have, I mean, do people come up there with box after box after box after box? They do. Um, some of really? them come with 5, 10, 12. Ideally, if you're going to come with more than 10 uh, boxes, um, you can call call us at 1-800-675-8118, extension 5, and we'll make an appointment with you guys, um, with whoever comes, so that we can unload them and everything, you know, the process be smooth. Some people come with 13-gallon um, bags of documents. So um, just based on the sizes, we'll let you know there if we um, consider them equivalent to the first two boxes. Hey, let's talk. Uh, you were here earlier this year and talking about identity theft. How prevalent is it in the Central Valley? It's just growing and growing and growing. So. Any reason for that? <sighs> the reason? <laughs> let's ask them. No, um, I'm. I. It's just. It's. It's just a high crime. It's just growing and growing. People just want to um, find easy ways to open accounts, and you know, their. You know, maybe their credit is ruined so they want to go ruin someone else's or they don't you know because of their information's ruined they want to get stuff but they can't so one way to do that is to steal someone else's identity and, yeah. and open accounts um, get loans rent apartments um, just buy expensive items. You know, I was gonna ask you once you steal someone's identity what can you do with it can, I mean, you can set up your own separate identity and do what? Can you? Can well, you, you can open. You can open line of credits. You can. You can. Per, you can make big purchases. Hmm. You can rent apartments. You can um, buy cell phones. Um, I mean, there. There's even. There's been times where you can steal someone's identity and get their prescription. Like. Wow. <laughs> Caller, are you there? Go ahead. Hello. Yes, good morning. Yeah, hi, how are you? Just fine. Go ahead. Uh, yes, t th you're talking about identity theft, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, my son uh, ran into some problems in 97. He and my daughter-in-law were going to have a house built, and they applied uh, to get a loan for it. Uh, but they told him that he couldn't get a loan because he had several thousand dollars worth of debt that he owed, and that unless he paid that, he couldn't get a loan. And he says, well, what do you mean? I haven't uh, borrowed any money or anything. He says, yes, uh, you were living in Los Angeles, and you uh, borrowed a lot of money, and you haven't paid it yet. And he says, listen, I have never lived in Los Angeles. I've always lived in Fresno. So they asked him that he had to have proof from the time that he has been here. So I'm the type of mother that when they were young, all the way from kindergarten all the way to seventh grade, I always saved their things that they made at school and their report cards and everything and their diplomas. So he came one day and he says, Mom, do you have any other stuff that I used to make and what, you know, when I was a kid? He said, I said, yes. So he packed up a bag of things that I had of his and he got cleared from that. Yeah. So Boy. it's worth it to save your kids' things so when they need it, you don't know. Yeah, what a horrible story. So thank you for the call. I appreciate it. What should someone do if they have their identity stolen? What can you um, do? Report it right away to the police so that they have a report that, you know, that their identity has been stolen. Um, contact your um, the Social Security office. Um, get a credit report immediately and let them know that you've been victim of identity theft so that they can flag your information. So if someone tries to open a line of credit, um, you get that phone call and you um, you can confirm whether it is indeed you trying to open a line of credit or if it's somebody that you know the person that has stolen your information is trying to open it yeah but accurately. how do you prove like you know this woman said it hurt you know they they said her son lived in la how do you prove to someone 
that no, I've never lived in LA. I, I live in Fresno. I've I've never worked in LA. How do you how do you convince somebody on, on the I other know. line? Just try to provide as much as you can. Um, you know, I know we um, we're promoting to come out and shred documents. Ideally, um, it's good to save uh, personal information six to seven years, and then after that, shred. Um, but just make sure you have things saved as well. Um, but you really and, and just provide it. It's it's kind of sad. It's really sad because it's a huge problem, identity theft, and it's only growing and growing. And there the the process. I've I've talked to many people who have gone through identity theft, and the process is just so hard to like like you're stating to prove that it wasn't you. So but all you, you would can think do it would be easy it. to right. prove because uh, you can you got witnesses as to where you are you can talk they can talk to your employer mm -hmm. they can talk to whoever witnesses yep. that actually know your 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 whereabouts correct I mean so why is it so hard so whoever's in charge for some reason they're not making it easier for people to to get out of that identity theft um, you know when you're you become victim so hopefully um, because it's growing and they're noted you know they're seeing it more and more often hopefully something gets done where it, it gets it's easier for uh, everyone else or everyone that's going through that the yeah. process how many calls do you get at the better business bureau of people that have been the, the victims of identity we get theft? hundreds and hundreds of calls but um just on that we we kind of we don't just at, you know tally it up or you know for exactly what they're calling but i mean we get calls every day you know, either someone who possibly thinks that they're going through identity theft or a family relative. Um, so we really push out the annual credit report website and their number so that they um, call and get their credit report and we recommend them to get it at least once a year. Yeah. And um, so that you can monitor your credit and see what's on there and make sure that everything's on there. It's supposed to be on there. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think we're about out of time, but I want to thank you for coming in. Uh, the event is tomorrow. Yes. Uh, let's put the full screens up one more time. We'll show those dates before we go. Um, and Gabby Mendoza, are you going to be out there tomorrow or no? I will not, but um, okay. But we will have BBB employees. And out. those are the dates right there: April 11th, April 18th, May 2nd, and May 16th. The shredding events. Uh, sponsored by the Better Business Bureau of Fresno. Yes. Thank you so much again, Thank and good you. luck with the uh, <laughs> the birth of your second child uh, next month. Yes. And I appreciate it very much, Gabby. Thank you. Thank you for having us. And if anyone has questions about the Shred events, you can visit bbb.org. Um, contact your local BBB, and we have a events page. Telephone there. number two is one eight hundred six seven five eight one one eight extension five. Okay, Gabby Mendoza, Better Business Bureau, thank you. We're back with our second guest here on Connect With Me. Remember the phone number, 436-ME-TV, option 11. We're back in mere moments. You can find movies on Over the Air Channel 13.3. Movies. Our name says it all. The Ballad of Andy and Barney. Andy and Barney were lawmen. Bravest you ever did see. Horned ever crook in the record book to stay out of Mayberry. They were the law. Yes, they were the law. No the Andy Griffith Show. I guess to sum it up, you could say there's three reasons why there's so little crime in Mayberry. There's Andy, and there's me, and baby makes three. <laughs> now on MeTV Fresno. We get our speed from Mom and Dad. They do stuff super fast. And now they got this new kitchen, so they're even faster. So they can help us with our free throws. The time-saving Frigidaire Gallery line with a quick preheat and smudge-proof stainless steel that resists fingerprints and cleans easily. It's mealtime in no time from start to clean. Frigidaire Gallery. Save more during Frigidaire Gallery bonus days when you buy three or more qualifying appliances. See the full line of Frigidaire appliances at Ventura TV Electronics and Appliances.
We need help to find this missing child. Hallie Cummings was seven when she went missing. She was last seen in Satsuma, Florida in February of 2009. This is what we believe she looks like today at age 11. If you have any information, please call the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children at 1-800-THE-LOST. That's 1-800-843-5678. Please help bring Hallie Cummings home. John Walsh. We need your help to capture this fugitive. James Bell is an alleged child predator. Bell's wanted for molesting three girls ages 9 through 13 while working at a local YMCA in 2003. He was arrested then fled. Bell has worked as a gymnastics instructor, coach, and a computer repairman. Bell could be anywhere along the west coast. If you know where he is, call 617-742-5533. Ventura TV Appliance Center. We're the low price leading brand's reliable advice place. The Frigidaire Gallery Dream Kitchen Get Yours Today Place. You with me? Right now, get huge savings on select Frigidaire Gallery appliances and pay no interest when paid in full within six months at the hometown low price think outside the big box place. Since 1951, Ventura TV Appliance Center, we're working hard to be your place. Dr. TV on Over the Air Channel 13.9. Is taking care of laundry taking too much of your time? Have you become a missing mom? With a new fast, efficient washer and dryer from Ventura TV Video Appliance, you'll spend more of your day the way you want. Save now on Frigidaire's Advanced Affinity Laundry Pair. Let Frigidaire save you energy, water, and time. Don't spend your life on laundry. Upgrade today at Ventura TV Video Appliance and save. And welcome back to the program here on Connect With Me. We're talking about college funds now, the second half of our program. And you are welcome to call in at 436-ME-TV, option 11. This is a community segment here on uh, the program today because it is a Friday. And so we're going to kind of switch gears from identity theft to college funds. And it really is expensive. You may have heard or read about in the news here just recently what Stanford University is doing. Any parent who is making less than 125 grand a year will allow their uh, son or daughter to attend Stanford University considering, uh, and this is a big consideration, that they have the grades to qualify, okay? That is a big if right there. Also, you heard about Starbucks. If you work at Starbucks and you're a college student or about to go to college, they'll pay for your college education. How do you like that? I want to put some full screens up on the uh, screen right now and go through these one by one because I want to talk about uh, some of these issues today. The good uh, news is, uh, considering the last 30 years or so, the cost of just going to college has jumped by 470 percent, while the family income grew just 157 percent, staggering, my friends, when you think about it. Now, did you also know that two out of three students graduate with a high debt? Usually about 20 grand on average, but most people that I personally know are paying a lot more than that, up to 40 and 50 grand. How about the average cost per year? Well, here it is. To attend a public university, it's gonna cost you about 25 grand. Private university, 35. Now these are average figures, it's not to the penny. And for an elite college, a whopping $60,000 a year for that precious education. Now, there are many ways that you can fund that education. 
as you see here on the full screens, uh, financial aid, we all know about that, a need-based system, a merit-based system, but today we're going to talk about some ideas that might help you get your kids started or your grandkids. I'm sure many of you have grandkids as well out there that are about to go to college. Live in our studio right now is this man, Scott Carl, a financial advisor. He's been on our program before, and today we're talking about how to send your kids to college and how you might be able to afford it. It's not an easy process. Uh, you have to start and plan early, but you know what? If your kid gets a scholarship, then it's all said and done, but if he or she doesn't, that's another story all in of itself. 436 Me TV, option 11. We're back with Scott Carl, our financial advisor, in just a moment. When you're looking for Whirlpool innovation and quality, who has the answers, the selection, the price? Ventura TV Appliance. With billions in nationwide appliance buying power, more than Home Depot and Best Buy combined will help you save. Our low prices on Energy Star qualified Whirlpool appliances save you energy and money and pay no interest on select models when paid in full within 12 months. Ventura TV Appliance, serving you since 1951. So have you thought about college? Maybe not for yourself, but for your kids, your grandkids? I don't know. It's a costly proposition. I hate to think about it. Uh, it is costly. But uh, Scott Carl is here. And welcome back to the program, sir. And you know one thing I heard Susie Orman say one time? You know who Susie Orman is Absolutely. on PBS? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was kind of shocked to hear her say this. Yeah. But, you know, it kind of makes sense once it's sung. She said, you know what? You should not have to sacrifice your retirement or your personal future just to send your kids to college. Did you hear her say that? Absolutely. I think I, I do hear, recall hearing that. Uh, and <laughs> were you, she's, were she's you little, right. Were you a little taken back when she actually had the courage to say that? Well, she's approaching it, you know, <laughs> as a professional approach um, in getting to know all the facts and the whole, all the parts to get your, your child to get a, a full ride scholarship. And it, you're right. Uh, it, it, she's right. It shouldn't. You shouldn't, it shouldn't affect your retirement at all. It really shouldn't when you pay attention to details. Yeah, it's mind boggling to think about how much it costs to go to college. Even to Fresno State now, it's not cheap. You know, when Correct. I was going to college, maybe when you were going to college, it was minimal. I went to Sacramento State University and I mean, it was chicken fee. You right. know, even to purchase books back yeah. then wasn't that expensive. Now, just to purchase a book, and a lot of things are done online now with iPads like what you got there. Right. But why is it why is it let me ask you this before we get into this program yeah, today yeah. is is educating kids is it's like a big business now is it not it, it sure does it seems it seems to be you wonder where all the money's going there's so many layers of administrators in the in in the colleges that i believe that's my i'm not quite for sure on that but uh it's management people overseeing other parts of uh uh, qu uh, getting uh, kids qualified to, if, if they're going to go to their organization or not. So uh, you're right. It's a, it's a huge cost. Yeah, I want to put up the first uh, full screen here and talk a little bit about this uh, incomes. And that's the question right there. And it says families with an annual household income uh, in excess of 150 k I believe, are not eligible to receive any kind of college funding assistance or financial aid. And you're, you checked False. That's correct. It's, Why? It's about uh, has nothing to do with household incomes. Um, really? It, 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 if you go the uh, the approach of filling out the FAFSA forms and do it doing it yourself, um, that does affect you. But what's more important, just to that one, uh, this this one part here, it's about student positioning. You need to get your child, if he or she's a hard worker, getting great grades, starting her or his freshman year, mm -hmm. you need to start to map out uh, the steps so the child is positioned uh, for full ride scholarships when they get into their senior year. But how is it not possible? So that it doesn't matter how much money the family's making when when you're uh, positioned properly in the eyes of these colleges, because they're they're going to want. A particular style of student wanting to attend their institution, so that's the the key. It has so nothing to do with how much you earn. Huh? It's a big misnomer. It is. That is kind of um, that statement that you just had up. Is what the public believes. 
to be true because most of them do it, try to do it themselves. It's a complicated process uh, getting scholarships for your child. It does require an expert. So somebody that says, okay, I'm making 200 grand a year, so my no. child doesn't qualify for financial aid. Not no. true. Not true. No. Not can, true. Yep, it's not true. It's all about, again, uh, it's kind of like f having a, a fit, uh, fitting that student uh, based on what that student wants to do in their life, what their likes or dislikes are. Um, they need to go out and visit a variety of schools in this country or state to get a feel of what's their best environment so, they want to want to uh, enjoy. So, so how do they? So it sounds like a loophole. I don't know if it is a loophole. That may be the wrong term. So uh, if if someone makes two hundred thousand dollars a year and they want their child to get financial aid, what kind of steps do they have to do? What what, sure. what do they have? Good question. What, do they have to well, fill out certain papers? What do they have yeah. to do? Well, the FAFSA form is the first thing most all families should do. What's and that? that's going to get your your um, what you call your um, your uh, the family um, contribution. They're going to they're going to take your financials and uh, determine what kind of federal government coupon you'll receive to offset the cost of that university or college that student wants to go. And then you got that number, so you can go that route and just pay that, and then pay the the gap between that. Uh, EFC and what the college wants, there's a gap there, and you can shell out your own money and get your child through school that way. But that's where it, it, that will if it, that's where it affects your income of how much uh, uh, reduction of your out-of-pocket costs will be. But there's the other side of applying for colleges and uh, applying for all the ones that fit that student, and that's where you really need a college plan expert on your team and they usually charge fees but I'm telling you uh, getting your child through uh, a full ride scholarship um, is almost as complicated as trying to fix the transmission on your car uh, it's that it, it's it's crucial to get a college planning expert so, on your team so get a college planning expert that can help you uh, uh, get your kid on this financial aid package. Just no, no yeah. matter how much money you make a no. year, yep. because they can they can fill out the proper paperwork and the process of going through that. That's right. Because if you get a full ride scholarship, the FAFSA discount doesn't even matter. Doesn't even apply. Nor, nor does it how much money you, or you, you did make. It, it's all about getting f free scholarships. It's all about doing the right. Getting paperwork. scholarships, not free. There's scholarships from these. Uh, from a variety yeah. of different uh, community projects yeah. and corporations and so forth. I got to go to break. Scott yep. Carl is here, financial advisor, talking about college funds. So remember, if you make 150 k or more per year, that doesn't disqualify you or your child from getting financial aid. Keep that in mind. Very important. But get a college, uh, uh, <coughs> excuse me, college education expert that can help you fill out the right paperwork for that particular college. 436, me TV, option 11. Back in just a moment. Hello, I'm John Walsh. We need your help to capture this fugitive. Francisco Molina Nieve has been on the run since March 2008. The police and the FBI need your help tracking this coward down. He's wanted for brutally beating his girlfriend and for the use of a firearm. He has three freckles and a crescent shape under his right eye. Call the Colorado FBI at 303-629-7171 if you know where he's hiding. We need help to find this missing child. April Andrews went missing when she was 15 years old. She was last seen in Pea Ridge, Arkansas in November of 2006. This is what we believe she looks like today at 23. If you have any information, please call the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children at 1-800-THE-LOST. That's 1-800-843-5678. Please help bring April Andrews home. Talking college funds, how to put your kids through college, and Scott Carl is here. He is the financial expert and talking about this. Put up the next full screen called Process. You've got to go through the proper process to do all the paperwork and every, everything necessary to get your kid uh, through college. That's the next question right there. The students who typically receive the most uh, lucrative college funding offers from uh, my experience are 
those who know best about the process. What does that mean, Scott? It means, uh, again, falling back on getting some professional advice on knowing the, uh, the right steps and knowing how your child is thinking, what would be the, the best interest of the child. You want them to have the best experience in college. And so sometimes the parents aren't real, the communication between the parents and the child really aren't that open. And so again, oh. they're kind of run, they're moving in the dark, if you will. And so it's important to have a professional guide you and your, the parent and the student through the process when they enter their freshman year in high school. So the communication between the parent and the child, yeah, very, very important. And they most time children listen to a third party more than their parents sometimes. Yeah. So what do you mean that, most time? All the time. <laughs> all, the time. all the time. So uh, the coach is uh, sometimes, it, it, it's just, it's really crucial. Let's go to the next one, non-loan. I, I want you to look at the screen here and explain what this one means to me and to all of the viewers. What does, what does this mean uh, as we read it up here on the screen? Yes. What does well, that mean? Well, the federal government, you would think, would um, they're a lender. They'd like to loan money to uh, consumers and students. And so the majority of non-loan college funding received each year comes from which of the following? Scholarships from the private sector. That's a fraction of it. But the colleges are the ones sitting on a lot of money. they and, got a ton of your money and in mind. So getting back to the fact of why high net worth parents would not be a candidate to get scholarships, don't schools want wealthy people to attend their school so they Two. can get <laughs> benefits from the alumni and other, uh, uh, other uh, incentives? Right. Uh, for endowments and uh, you know to to buy buildings with their names on it, they they want parents who have a lot of money, they want their children to go to their schools, okay, so they're sitting on all the cash to provide that student to attend their institution for no cost. They've yeah. got the money, and so you need to apply to those schools that are relevant to your child in the proper sequence the process again. Hey, let's take a phone call here. Uh, good morning, caller. You're on the air with Scott Carl and your question, please. Uh, yes, two, two things. One is what is the general price range for hiring a professional? And two, is there, um, do they ever say, no, don't go to this type of, uh, of uh, occupation because there's no jobs and you're not ever going to go and um, make any money on this or do they just find the, the loan to get you into college? That's okay, Good thank question. you. Go ahead, Scott. Well, the, the first one I didn't get quite get. Hire, uh, how much does it cost to hire a professional? Oh, the fees for a college planning expert vary. You really want to get Give us a couple of ranges. the initial consultations. Um, are well worth the time. Uh, initial consultation may cost three hundred dollars, two hundred fifty to three hundred dollars, and then if you hire one, it could be uh, through a, a freshman year's experience through their senior year, uh, three to four thousand dollars. Okay. And uh, usually they're able to finance it, make terms to make it easier on families to pay month to month. And and what about that professional telling that student, you know, maybe you shouldn't go into that field yep. because there are very few jobs. That's exactly uh, the point of hiring an expert is to give the student a variety of options and fill them in um, with, uh, you know, like if, if a child was interested in art, gee whiz, how many areas of the art could you go into in this <laughs> country? You yeah. could go commercial, yeah. uh, be a, in a, a museum, uh, a, a variety of different things. So you're right. He's uh, right. Let's put another full screen up. And we're, we're trying to educate our public. This is uh, called universities. And um, let's see here. What are we looking at? Uh, we're looking at high school. Will you explain the graphic here? What are we looking at, Scott? Sure. Uh, most families are familiar with uh, the gray uh, statements there. Mm -hmm. High school grades got to be up. Um, you, you've got a class rank, all of these, count, most counselors at high schools um, are meeting with parents and talking to, to get their child, so these their are, students. So these are all the aspects that count toward getting into a university. Good point, which, yes. one, which one counts the most? It's the one in red, fit, through, uh, find, uh, excuse me, student positioning, enrollment management. That means, again, I hate to keep repeating the so college expert. So your SAT scores don't count as much? 
you What's need that? you also need uh, uh, some uh, coaching on how to approach those tests most students don't reach their full potential in taking those tests the way they think they work so yeah. you need some well you would think that the, maybe the gpa or sat test or some of the, the essays gpa is the easiest one most for the, for the kids that enjoy school and uh, they're always on top of their grades um, that's an automatic you got to get there first but what counts the most is what's written at the bottom of the screen for all you viewers it's, it's in red dude, it's so important it's when your your child enters the freshman year is to hire a coach get a college plan expert the money so, would be so well, that well, well, smith, well what, spent what does that mean to fit through positioning that means that a, a college expert can position you to yeah. go to the right college let's say a, a student wants to be in art well there's over 4,000 instant or I call them institutions colleges in this country um, how many of those 4,000 are maybe eligible tip-top schools for this child that's interested in doing art hmm. so you need someone to help break those down and then you talk to the student well does the parents want the student to go out of state stay in state what are the colleges that are our best fit. I see. So it goes on and on and on, especially applying for scholarships. Got to take a break. Scott Carl is here, financial advisor, talking about college funding and how to best position your child to go to college. Back in just a moment. Tune in to Heartland for the best in true country music. Relive vintage specials, one-of-a-kind concerts, and country music's earliest videos. Heartland is the heart of country. The only place where you can find country music, country stars, and country lifestyles 24-7. Heartland, the heart of country. Now on channel 13.2. Back here on the program, 436 Me TV Option 11, limited time left here with Scott Carl talking about uh, college funding. Let's put up the next one. It's called Houses. And what are we talking about here? Well, we're talking about your home loan. And then what does this have to do with college, all these three houses that great, we're looking at here? Great question. And this is financial positioning for parents is key in using the least expensive dollars if your child doesn't get a scholarship. Having a, a, a plan B in case your child doesn't get funding and, and get rides to school. Okay, okay, but why is this graphic important? What are sure. we looking at? Well, this is a common um, uh, mistake that people make with their money. So if you're losing money doing financial strategies uh, in your personal uh, finances, that affects uh, how your money and it affects your retirement and it affects paying for college too so this is a common pitfall people make with their money so which so one of these three there. you bet most people would think that cash is the least expensive way to buy a house versus a 15-year mortgage or a 30 most people would select that the 15 is less expensive than the 30 and it's because we've been conditioned to only hear one part of the equation and that is saving interest on my mortgage that's the end of the discussion you don't see beyond that there's so much more to weigh and measure than that cash if you sink 300 let's say three hundred thousand dollars cash into a home if you could afford to do so that money is really locked up doing one multi one single use you're not getting multiple uses of your money I'm not saying risking your house to pay for college but my point is is if that money was earning interest instead of putting the th whole three hundred thousand in it let's say you put f you, you so take what the, does a thirty-year mortgage have to do with college funding how do you how do you relate that to a college fund well this is a, a mistake people make that they lose wealth in their personal finances that is a rippling effect to the expense of paying for college you just comp you're making it worse right by but making I, these mistakes but but a 30 so okay I, I'm not understanding what the a 30-year mortgage the 30-year mortgage is the least expensive way to buy the house okay in most instances okay. because you get tax deductions for writing off your interest gotcha. so that that's a part of a plus on your gotcha. ledger gotcha. and also having more control of your money because if time time comes uh, when it comes time to pay for college can you take a kitchen sink or a part of the house over to the inst the, the college and use that as a down so payment saying, you can't do it you you're locked out of a, your money are you saying that a 30-year mortgage you can take a second out on your house to pay for college that's that's a potential option absolutely but okay. this this particular frame is about 
which one would you select? What would you, would you think is the least expensive way to buy the house? Gotcha. And so the 30-year 30, 30 usually comes out on top. And go to the next uh, graphic there if we can. It's called funding. Um, what yeah. are we looking at here, Scott? Well, um, we again, the, the public, general public's been conditioned to thinking that a silver bullet financial product is the answer to save for college. Uh, the most popular one is 529 plans. and. You need consumers need to know the pluses and the minuses on both sides of a product like 529. We're only hearing the good side. We're not hearing the bad side. Gotcha. And so we're not. I'm not a big fan of 529. Again, your money is in isolation. You can't use it for multiple purposes at the same time. And if the child doesn't go to school, you get a penalty. And if the market goes down, you're let, you're strapped. Okay, how about this one here? This one here is where the college planning expert comes in to seek out these opportunities to get free money. And okay. you can go right down the chart there and you can see. Uh, okay. So that's that's what we're, that's the big goal is to get free ride scholarships. Get All your right. child through school at no cost. Caller, you're on the air. Limited time with your question, please. Yes, uh, I, I really don't quite agree with uh, the gentleman there and when it comes to mortgages and so forth. I've been, I purchased my home when my daughter was first born and I opened her uh, mutual funds uh, for college and uh, I was able to, uh, because of the lower cost per month uh, uh, on my mortgage, I was able to input that money into the, uh, into her mutual funds for college and, uh, and hence uh, be able to pay, uh, uh, now she's got over $70,000 in mutual funds uh, to pay for her college, and uh, we're about two years away from paying off our house. So, you okay. know, I don't see where you want to spend an extra 15 years uh, paying uh, interest on your principal of your mortgage, uh, and at the same time, uh, you know, where you, where you could put that money towards uh, your, your, your child's college. Okay, thank uh, you. So, you know, I, Good I, I question. Don't see the reasoning there. I understand thank your you point. When you're looking at things in a macro state, looking at, you mentioned a couple of different financial products, your house, mutual funds okay those two items they are intertwined and connected so what we're looking at is if you had more interest mortgage interest deduction that affects your taxes so you're getting a tax deduction and then you've got mutual funds that you get a, a compound tax associated with your seventy thousand so you uh -huh. haven't taken into consideration the taxes that you paid on the gains on that mutual fund so if you were to look at your ten uh... your uh... 1099s from that dividend that was shot out to you or reinvested in your mutual funds, you had to pay a tax on that. And since your house was almost paid off, low interest deduction, you paid full tax on that money. So if you put all those variables together on a model, I think I could uh, turn you around on that, uh, that opinion. Let's put up the uh, next full screen. It's called student. Uh, we'll go through these quick. We've got about two minutes left here, okay. Scott. Uh, we'll go through these real quick. Go ahead and put it up there. There you go. Uh, what are we talking about here? Well, student this is loans. what you want to avoid is student loans. Um, and through s student positioning, again, you should be able to go through college without having to be saddled with debt. All right. But the, the reason of this screen is, is you need to identify all your resources, whether they're good or bad. This is like taking full inventory, full inventory of what your options are. Go to the next one, please. Savings. Same thing. Yep. These are these are options too. Okay. Uh, the gentleman that just was the the caller just a moment ago uh, used mutual funds, so that's right. an option. We got about a minute and a half. Go to the next okay. one. It's called investments. Again, we're looking at. We're, and he talked about the mutual fund. We're remember? over we're overturning yeah. all the stones to see the least expensive. The gentleman's not looking at it in macro. We want to use the least expensive dollars to pay for college, and so he spent seventy thousand dollars for college. Just think of what, if he was able to avoid paying that to a school, how much would that 70 be worth 15, 20 years ago, or from now? All right. Next, me. and retirement. Retirement. Okay, we can't do that one. All right, it's, it's missing. Why is it missing? The retirement. Right. Okay. Talk a, quickly about the retirement. We've got one minute left. Um, it could be pension plans or 401k loans, um, things right. of that nature, too. So How about mortgages? Mortgages. Again, your, your houses could be the least expensive dollars to fund college. you got 3 or 4% interest rates, tax-deductible interest. You can get second mortgages. Okay. 
We're out of time, sadly. We, we can come back and talk about this. You're going to come back, too, maybe possibly with a, uh, a college advisor on how to do all this, right? I think I can line that up. All right. Scott, thanks yeah, for your valuable well. information. I really appreciate, I appreciate it very much. Got to have an open mind with this is what you're saying. There's a lot to it, all and right. so it's fortunate we don't have enough time. All right. Scott Carl, see you on Monday with Dennis Hart.